disciplinary studies. He's a retired United States Marine with eight years of service in signals intelligence. He's also the proud recipient of the Navy and Marine Corps Commendation Medal with Combat Valor Device. In his he enjoys philosophy, good conversation at cafes, mountaineering, surfing, and being a cattleman on the family farm down the bayou. Those were his words, not mine. He hails from Cutoff, Louisiana. Our con speaker tonight, please join me in welcoming Mr. Micah Hebert. Standing here tonight, looking around this auditorium, I invite you, please join me. Look around. Look at who's sitting next to you. Appreciate the incredible diversity that we have sitting right here in this auditorium. People of all races and creeds, social economic backgrounds, educational backgrounds, genders, sexual orientations, political and personal identities. We all come together in this diverse and great society, a real gumbo of live and let live, of tolerance, respect, and appreciation. How is it that we came to have this society? Well, let me tell you, it's because people spoke their voice, people spoke their mind, and they voted. Tonight, I will show you why you need to vote con, because your vote does matter. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Micah Hebert. I'm a 30-year-old student here at Nichols, did eight years in the Marine Corps, fought overseas, did four tours, been in close combat to defend just this very issue. I want to let you know it's very near and dear to my heart, and it matters because you do. You need to vote con tonight because your vote matters. Now why is that? Let me open with a quote from the great civil rights leader, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Dr. King said, our lives begin to end the day we stay silent on things that matter. The first reason you should vote con tonight is because your voice is your vote. From the beginning of our country, the right to vote has been hotly contested. We're founded by a bunch of colonials who thought that they should have a right to speak their minds and be heard. They fought for a rallying cry about no taxation without representation. Well, what do you think that representation is but your vote? On to our founding documents, saying that all men are created equal. How can we hope to ensure that unless we speak? Because that's the only way we're going to be heard. From women's suffrage on to issues of slavery, it's always been a struggle. People have always tried to disenfranchise what your opinion is, say so that you don't matter. In 1861, according to Encyclopedia Britannica, Abraham Lincoln won the presidency of these United States. What he did in that election was determine what kind of a course this country would take, whether or not we would tolerate a new institution such as slavery. We were engaged in a bitter, terrible civil war, and that established that such an issue wouldn't stand with the people. Many people lost their lives in that vote, and I wish that you would feel empowered in yours. Now don't think that they're just going to give it to you. It's always been a good old boys club. It used to be landowning, rich white men, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. If you weren't rich enough, if you weren't their flavor of white, if you weren't, if you didn't have enough land, if you weren't of their political background, they weren't going to let you in. People struggled, people pushed, so that you might be able to say what your mind is, what your heart feels. And the way to do that in our system is through your vote. Now this is the reason that 
your vote is your voice. But this brings me on to my second point, and that is that your vote is your life. Elections matter. Reference.com mentions that Adolf Hitler won a small election March 5th, 1933. You may or may not be familiar with Mr. Hitler, but he led Germany down a horrible path that led to the terribly destructive war that we know as World War II. Over 60 million lives ended because he won that election. 11 million people died in the horrible Holocaust, 6 million Jewish people. People murdered just because they were born of a different inclination than what Mr. Hitler thought would be right. All because he won an election. In 1990, according to History.com, President George H.W. Bush won and was able to pass the American with Disabilities Act. He didn't do it because he was pressured. He was midway through his term. He did it because it was the right thing to do. He gave voice and power to people who were powerless, a minority group, people who suffer physical disadvantages and couldn't speak for themselves. He gave them a voice. By you voting, you empower those who are voiceless. You give voice to those who are otherwise fly, and you give power to dignity. Let's fast forward a bit, the year 2000. In a presidential election there between the other George Bush's son, George W. Bush, and Mr. Al Gore. The whole election, the whole country's outcome came down to the state of Florida. The way the state of Florida went is how the election would go. They had over six million votes cast. Out of those six million votes, it came down to only 537 votes. Now we probably have about half that just here tonight. Now if you think back, look in your classes that you didn't see day in, day out. If just you and your classmates that you see day in, day out were a vote, we could have swayed the outcome for that election and determine who would become the president, be it Mr. Gore or Mr. Bush. Now I'm not here to comment one way or the other, but we obviously saw who was in office for the dramatic events of September 11, 2001. The outcome for Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Our government's response to that was all determined by who was in office. And that was settled, could have been settled, by a number comparable to the people you attend class with every day. More recently, they had a vote in England with Brexit, and it was determined whether or not the United Kingdom was going to leave the European Union. 75% of millennials voted to stay. Three out of four people your age decided that they wanted to stay in the European Union. Yet, because only 36, about one in three millennials came out to vote, they were deluded and they weren't allowed to speak their voice. So Brexit was passed and the UK is leaving, 52% to 48. Because old people didn't come out in numbers to vote, despite the overwhelming majority wanting to stay, their whole lives are being impacted. Where they can live, where they can work, who they can marry, this all being determined for them. Now I don't know about you, but I don't like people to speak for me. And voting is really the only way to speak for yourself and be heard. More recently, The Economist with this current election is talking about how Texas, a vital state, a great state that might determine just in its sheer numbers the outcome of the election, is changing from red Republican to blue Democrat. I mean, from jobs, the direction of this country, on to the very soul of how our great nation is going to conduct itself. This is determined via the election. It's just in a week, and your vote does matter. Remember, your vote is your life. From how much money you get, onto what kind of career opportunities you're gonna have, what kind of jobs will be open to you, what kind of roads you get to drive on, the quality of it, all of this is determined by your vote. I urge you to vote con because your vote does matter. Even on local issues, from how much money this university gets in funding, on to how the floodgates are in the local community, deciding whether or not marijuana will be legal in this state, on to the drinking age. All this is determined by your vote. Your vote is your voice. Your vote is your life. Tonight, I hope I've reminded all of you why your vote matters. 
I hope that these reasons should compel all of us to vote Khan tonight. Because a vote for Khan is a vote for your empowerment. A vote for Khan is a vote in yourself. And a vote for Khan is a vote in your future. Thank you.